Hi guys, welcome back to Josium Draws. Okay, so for today, I want to show off one of my favourite digital art tools that I pretty much literally use every time. This is for like stuff when I want to get more dynamic inking or help with like vanishing lines, isometric lines, help with drawing eclipses, perspective, and it's pretty much got the best smoothing, in my opinion, out of everything. And it's called Lazy Nazumi. So I was first introduced to Lazy Nazumi by a guy called Keenan Lafferty. He is absolutely amazing. Go check him out. He's a professional concept artist working for a game company. Uh, I'll have his link to his channel in the description below this video. Please go check him out. Um, and it blew my mind at like, how amazing it was. So I'm going to show it off for you today because I really want more people to use this tool. Bear in mind though, it is a paid tool, but it's really not that much. It's totally worth it. And I'll have a link to their website below where you can uh, read all about it, check more about it, and uh, then you can fully make your mind up about it. But stick around for the video because I think it's definitely interesting. So I'm basically just going to run through the whole program and show off and show the difference between like having it on and having it off and using it with different brushes and also using it on the, this little demon guy character that I created a while ago and I like to use him as a um is as a um like a test dummy or like a test thing to test out new brushes that I make or different things or stuff like this. So uh yeah, stick around for that and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so welcome back guys. So I'm going to show off Lazy Nozumi. Now, uh, when you come to do some inking or like, you you want to get some nice smooth lines, don't you, right? So if I just demonstrate here, I've got just a normal default round brush getting Photoshop and, uh, you know, I'm going to ink this guy. You're like, oh, well, okay, you know, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. You see how um, they're not really that smooth, these lines? It's kind of like difficult to like steady hand and you have to go really, really quickly. That's because it, there isn't any like smoothing on it. But if I turn on Lazy Nozumi, uh, what you have to do is you have to like click file and then you hook the window to your, um, the window that you are in Photoshop. I've already done it, but um, you hook it to your, bit of your window and it'll like flash for a few seconds and it'll be hooked up. So if I just activate that now, It'll come with a box saying after clicking OK, you know, it'll hook your window up. And then if you hover over it, it'll um, blink a couple of times like that. And then it'll be hooked up. Uh, now, I've got smoothing on and I'll get that to that in a minute. And it's called Massive. And this is one of my favorite ones to ink with. So the difference is, you can see, it's nice, like thick to thin. Um, kind of like, and it can go a lot slower with the uh, Lazy Nozumi on. And you remember a couple of seconds ago, I was doing that really, really fast. But now, I'm not doing it as fast. And you see um, how better the results are from actually having it on. It's it's really quite amazing. If I just uh, turn this off now, and yeah, I do it on this other side, you see how jarring it is? It's not... Um, it, it's not the same quality. Okay, so I'm back after that quick um, time lapse. And as you can see, these lines are really nice, really juicy, really smooth. And this is just with the hard round brush, and it looks amazing. But uh, that's um, massive. Uh, my favorite setting on Lazy Nizumi, and I use for all my inking. But I want to take a step back and um, go to from the list and just quickly run through them, so uh, just so the video is not too long. Uh, but the first one I'm going to talk about is fixed angle lines. So if I just turn off that inking I did earlier, and I go to here, you can see that. Um, if I um, do it on this guy, you know, he's got he's got this really nice like computer-like quality to it. So if I wanted to make him like a cyborg or something, you know, I have the ability to do that. And it the it comes it it's a little bit jarring to start with, but once you get used to it, it actually looks really cool. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this. 
you see he's got like maybe he wanted to be some sort of like cyborg demon or something like that and uh, that's basically just fixed angle lines i haven't used this yet like properly but um, as you can see it has a really cool effect so maybe you want to use this for some environment stuff or you want to use it for something else so that's fixed angle lines uh, the next one on the list is called fuzzy if i just get rid of uh, this here first because you I'll just do this for every single one. Uh, this one is called Fuzzy. Now, this one gives you kind of like sort of blotchy, fuzzy lines. Maybe you want to use this for like maybe some fur texture. Or you want to use it for something else. Or maybe you just want some texture in your brush itself. Uh, this is a really great one to use. I've used this for um, furry characters that I've used on... Well, not actually furry, but you know, like fuzzy creatures. Um, and it, it looks really cool, it adds some nice like dynamic um, kind of like fuzziness to it as you can see there uh, but that is fuzzy so if I just get rid of that the next on the list uh, it's called gears now this is really cool, this has like this ruler on it if I just put this here and I go on to there um, you can see you can make this bigger or smaller, probably change if you hold down um, control, you get these other little dots here, you can twist it and rotate it, or you can squash it and make it bigger, or you can squash it and uh, like stretch it, I think it's really cool. And uh, this is called gears, and basically that makes a gear pattern, so that's really helpful for like if you want to, um, you know, like, uh, again, use this for like environment stuff. I use it on um, like rotate. You, know, you need to draw gears, or you need to draw them on a robot character. I think that's uh, super cool. So that's really cool, especially if you want to get like a quick gear in there, and uh, you don't really have anything else. The next one on the list is called noise, and as you can imagine. This does exactly what, if you've heard of noise before, you know, it does this kind of stuff. Where it's like got a lot of texture in it. Um, I'm not sure what you'd use this for, maybe like some other like, fuzzy creatures, or you'd use it for something else. But it's got really nice texture in it, and um, I think it just looks really cool, to be honest. Obviously, I'd go a lot slower and a lot better with this, and maybe you'd only maybe use this for like selectively and not to align a whole character unless you want a certain effect to it so look at there he kind of looks like a stuffed doll there at the moment and that's really cool um i haven't used this i guess i'd probably in an illustration yet but uh i will at some point if i ever need to and it's really handy when you really do need it there uh, next is steps as you can imagine does this kind of stuff you know creates like steps this could be useful for like um lightning i suppose or the kind of like randomness that you want to add to it to an image or to a piece I think that's really cool next one is um, Bezier and as you can imagine as if you've heard of Bezier handles you again you got like this um, really weird handle here that comes up and if you um, do that you can see it's on a curve it's a Bezier curve and you can imagine you can um, twist it and turn it round and do stuff like this so it's, it's really useful for like curves especially if you want to do like environment stuff I think it's actually pretty cool that's really cool I like that here I haven't used it yet but uh, or for anything proper but uh, I still think it's amazing next one is connected lines as you can see um, if you do that it pretty much just connects our lines no matter where you rotate it you can connect your lines up this could be useful for doing perspective or if you're doing again environmental stuff um, I really like it if you press alt you can like stretch this however long you want it I think it's really really cool uh, yep let's get rid of that the next one on the list is cubic bezier as you can imagine it's another bezier curve and it basically just does that 
it's a really cool bezier brush uh, for when you really need it. And you get these really nice, like, curvy, swoopy lines that really do come in handy whenever you need it. Next is Eclipse. Now, Eclipse is a really cool. This is Eclipse Saw. As you can imagine, it creates a saw shape. And this is really helpful for, like, when you want these, like, specific shapes. You can make it bigger or smaller. I, I imagine this would be good for, like, a logo design as well, actually. You know? Uh, or creating unique patterns or whatever you want to like create I think like that could be like a interpreted as a rose or something as a quick like logo concept I think that's really helpful and useful let's see what else we've got we've got Eclipse Sigmoid now this one does uh, he's like a kind of looks like these Spongebob um, flowers in the show uh, these ones are cool again ha more has more like um logo capabilities or purposes i would say but it looks really cool um and if you ever want to use this like custom shape or something it's always there for you to use uh, this one is called eclipse sign this one is again another custom shape like a basically a star shape but it's really really fun to use these to see what you can get and if you combine them you can make some really interesting shapes um, you know or interesting effects or something again like logo purposes or whatever you want to get like done quickly or a quick shape I think that's really cool and if you can mess around with all this kind of stuff uh, and then obviously next is Eclipse Square and as you can imagine what can you imagine that does it makes a freaking square but if you you know you've got squares here Again, more of like another gear shape thing, but again, look, you can kind of like really shrink it down and make some unique shapes or overlap them. Stuff like that M might be useful for like drawing maps or doing some more technical stuff. I think that's really, really cool. Next is a clip triangle, which you can imagine does the same kind of thing, except it makes more of a uh, mustache shape. Which I think is really cool. It's really, really handful for like logo creation, or if you want to get like some unique shapes, stuff like that. And you can imagine like the rest of them and sort of thing. Ruler. Now we're onto the rulers. Uh, basically, this is Eclipse, which basically just means a circle. Really, really, really helpful when you're going to get like um, some really round eyeballs, or if you want to do a vehicle and do um, wheels. You want to do stuff like a compass, or you want to do um, shoulder guards on a robot. You want to do um, just other basic stuff like that. Or you want to add to it as well. And you can see how cool I've got this like ripple effect that I've made. Um, and obviously you can like squash and rotate and, and make the um, the square bit of the circle bigger. Sorry, and other stuff. It's it's incredibly cool how much stuff you can actually do with this. That's super, super helpful. I've used the Eclipse loads of times. Uh, obviously, there's other rulers like Fisheye Perspective, which obviously, if you've heard of Perspective, you need to get 1.2 point, 3 point, 4 point, and then um, 5 point, which is actually Fisheye fish Perspective, which I've never actually done before because I really struggle with Perspective, but this really does help. Um, then you've got other rulers like Isometric, which is more of like for game art, I would say, like Isometric Game Art. Um, and you've got like parallel lines, parallel saws as you saw before, would we'll make more of like a um, saw shape, like that. That'd be really cool for like a minimalistic waves, or if, you know, you want to do other stuff with it. If I, um, again, if I hit control, you can uh, rotate it, and you can go the other way. This could be useful for making patterns, or doing all sorts of other stuff to it. Maybe, maybe some minimalist lightning or other stuff like that I think that's really really cool uh, parallel sigmoid as you heard before with sigmoid uh, other rulers are parallel sign square triangle of the perspective eclipse which will essentially make a circle in perspective 
so if you have all these other rulers on if I shift this over uh, you can see these lines here it'll put it into perspective if I do that there then you can connect up and make like tubes or other stuff basically helps really helps you like with perspective and I think that's just incredible um radial lines basically if you want like um anime speed lines essentially um you can curve it here you can curve it in other directions um you can see this could be useful like getting big hairs on a creature or if you just want to do some stuff like that maybe something's being thrown or something I, th I I really like that one. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We've got radial saw, which you can imagine does what it did before, except it's the radial lines. I haven't used that one yet properly, but when I need like lightning shooting out or some minimalistic stuff like that, I think it's really cool. Um, and you got all these other bunch of rulers here. I'll just rattle them off. Uh, radial sigmoid, radial sine, radial square, triangle, golden ratio. That's very, very, very useful for like, especially when you're in composition. Um, there's something called the golden ratio, which leads the eye and into the image, uh, leads the viewer's eye into the image. That is really useful for composition. I'd highly recommend taking advantage of that one. And then you got um, spiral saws, sigmoid, spines, square, triangle, spiral. And then the uh, vanishing lines for perspective. Um, so those are all them. Those are really, 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 really useful for um, obviously if you want to do stuff in perspective, or game art, or stuff like that it's it's just incredibly helpful. Then you get to um, my favorite setting in um, Lazy Nizumi, which is basically the smoothing. Now I've already shown off the massive smoothing, and you can um, use all these kind of like different slides to adjust. The amount or the mode or um, how like actually hard it is and stuff like that but I want to show off some of the other ones so you have got a smoothing one called pressure gain now pressure in digital art is like when the harder you press the thicker the line is so if I go really light here and then I go really thick you can see the, the harder I press the thicker the line is and this could be useful for like getting really nice variation in your lines. If I do a test on our little demon guy here, see how nice that looks. Obviously, you would use this sparingly, uh, but stuff like on this horn here, you see how nice and thick I can get that. I can contrast it with really thin lines. Um, really useful for like if this is your style of inking. I'd highly re recommend using that one. Right. Then you've got um, something called pulled saw. This one's really cool. You see how it makes that saw shape? It basically just makes that saw shape, but it's on like a almost like a pulled string that's being pulled behind, and that's really useful. I mean, you could. Um, use this on all sorts of other stuff I've never really used it that much but it's definitely there if you really need it like all the other um, ones like you got the sigma this the sign the square the string the pulled string one is very very useful like it, as you can see it's it gives you so much control on where your brush is actually going and what it's actually doing like it's 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 almost as if like you've got a ball with a string and you're pulling the string and the ball is falling where the string is going so if I do that you can see how slow I can actually go and there's no like wobbling it's incredibly incredibly useful but you do have to watch out for like it, it is kind of slow so you have to kind of get used to it as you can see it gives you so much control over like your lines it's so worth having this one on 
Uh, but yeah, that's the pulled string. That's probably the most common one that people probably know about. Um, other ones like uh, pulled triangle, which you can imagine makes a triangle. Now, the next ones are really interesting. Next one's called speed pressure. So as you can imagine with a name like speed, the faster you go, the thicker the lines, the slower you go, the thinner your lines. So as you can see, I'm going quite slow here. Yes, the lines are wobbly, but uh, they are thin, but the faster it goes, faster, 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 it's getting a nice variation in your thickness of your lines. So if you really want to go kind of like change up how fast or slow you want to ink, so if I just ink at the top of his ear there, kind of slow, and then I want to go fast, and see how quickly I can get a thick line going. It's, it's really useful if you like doing it this way, like I do, but again, my favorite is massive. Um, so that's interesting. The next one that's coming up is called Smeed, Speed Smooth. Sorry, Speed Smooth. So as you can imagine, same kind of thing. The slower you go, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then the faster you go, the more smooth your lines will go. And that could be really helpful, especially if you've been inking uh, digital art for a while and you know that you know going fast will give you good lines so the more you faster you go the better lines you will get and you can tailor all of this to your own needs there's sliders and all sorts of stuff actually in lazy nozumi itself for you to um, mess around with and find your sweet spot for where you like each of these you can spend hours doing this. Um, the next one is um, subtle, and these are under the category uh, smoothing. So obviously, as you can imagine, it's subtle smoothing, but it's definitely there if you don't like to have your art look, um, if you still want to have a lot of control and you like the way you did it before. This is got subtle smoothing on, but it's there if you need it which I quite like. Get rid of that. Uh, and finally, <clears throat> there is weighted. Now you can mess around with these sliders again, like I said, and show how much, you know, like how much drag or mass you have according with um, on the actual brush itself and that like the max pressure or max speed you have. Now this is just the default stuff and you see how barely visible the line is in, but it gets you some really nice um, inking going on. Obviously, with the weighted, you have to really find the sweet spot. You see, how kind of like difficult it is, and you do need to get used to it. But once you do, it's actually incredible. I'm getting some really awesome um, ink lines, and that's. Basically everything in laziness and we got really quickly a quick overview of um, all the programs and that obviously like I said if you get it or if you look up another tutorial or another video or visit the website you can find a lot more about this stuff but I just want to make this video just because it's fun and I wanted to show off and more people to see it even if it's only just one other person. So like I said my favorite setting is massive so that was only just with the default round brush. But if I go down on all these brushes, um, I've got some here that I've made myself recently. And you can see how awesome this is. So if I just um, ink this demon guy. And I'll check back in with you when I've inked him and we can compare him to the other ink that we did before. And this is where like it comes in with um, the different brushes because it really affects how different brushes behave with the different settings. So I'll check back in a minute when I've inked this. Okay, catch you in a minute. <laughs> Quick um, 
speed inking you can uh, of the steam and guy you can see the clear difference between um the HD using the normal round brush ink with the massive smoothing on and my custom brush ink that i made by myself um you can see the difference in the inking from the standard normal one to this one you can see the um kind of almost still uniform kind of like inking you've got here where you do have nice stick to thins except it's all still just very uniform but uh with my custom one here and you can do this for any kind of brush you want even if you, you know you want to make one yourself like i have it still works you can see you got these really nice stick to thins in the horn here in the mouth on the belly here you got this like textured that's there as well um stuff on the tail there as well just stuff like that makes it so much better and i could never would ever be able to achieve this without the help of laser and zoom it's incredibly incredibly cool so if you did um enjoy this video don't forget to like subscribe share my work around and um that's all i've got for you and i'll see you in the next one see you next time hey there thanks for watching if you like what you see don't forget to like comment subscribe and share my work around i'll see you next time